uh, one of our men in the car. Uh, unfortunately, he, of course, had no gun and did no shooting, but uh, he has identified the two men who had guns and who fired guns. I think there were about 10 or 12 shots fired into the car in which this woman was. Six-shooter or shotgun? I, I think they're revolvers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they discussed that it was over, that if the woman died, that they were going to throw the guns into the blast furnace where they work in those steel mills down there. And uh, that's what we are uh, laying for now, to uh, head off from, uh, these individuals when they come to work this morning and shake them down. If we are lucky enough to find a gun on them, uh, that will be the big break in the case. But in any event, whether they find the gun or not, we know who they are, and then we'll bring them in and check them down in interrogation. Thank you so much, Edgar. As usual, you're right on top of it. And this is 8.15 now, and you, you call me and make them get through to me. I checked last night about one, and uh, they gave me the full information. And uh, I just heard a little while ago about this fellow calling me. I didn't know anything about it, and I think I'll call him. Uh, you see no reason why I shouldn't do I see no reason why you shouldn't. Uh, the radio said he was very angry because they wouldn't put him through to you last night. I don't see any reason why he should have been expected to be, to be put through. He could have called the Department of Justice or the FBI, the one there. Uh, I don't know anybody, anybody's on duty in the department at night, but we're on, on duty 24 hours a day there. Yes, I've talked there several times. Uh, Agent Swanson was yes. very helpful to me. Yes. Well, there, we, we always have uh, one or two men on duty all the time so that if anything does break, they can uh, 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 once, uh, alert me. And I was alerted during the morning to make certain I've talked with uh, uh, Sullivan, who is the inspector in charge down there, to immediately move in and take hold of this case. He's been on the, on the march from Selma to Montgomery. But this thing is now broken, and he is, is, uh, is over that by this time and has taken charge of it. We've got the informant in the office, and we're talking to him because uh, uh, he's scared to death, naturally, because he fears for his life. But uh, what is it? What is an infiltrator and an informant? You hire someone and they join the clan and keep... You only go to someone who is, who is in the clan and uh, uh, persuade him to work for the government. Uh, we pay him for it. Uh, uh, sometimes they demand a pretty high price and other times they don't. Now, for instance, in those three bodies we found in Mississippi, we had to pay $30,000 for that. And who gave us the identity, uh, uh, and gave us the uh, place where the bodies were uh, were found. And then after we found the bodies, we uh, ascertained the identity of one man. And from him, we broke him down, and he gave us the identities of the other 19, two of whom confessed. Now, this man that we have now, this informant, uh, he's not a regular agent of the Bureau, but he's one of these people that put in just like we do into the Communist Party and so forth, so they'll uh, keep us informed. And uh, uh, fortunately, he happened to be in on this thing last night. Otherwise, we'd be looking for a needle in the haystack. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.